Nice jumper, mate. I think you might give Owen a run for his money with that one. Yeah, thanks. Ah, speak it. <laughs> all right, mate. No, 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 you won't. Oh, nice jumper, mate. All right, boys. Yeah, all right. How you doing? I thought we said dress for Christmas. This is our dress at Christmas. <sighs> Put it on. Put this on. Put it on. This is the Christmas Cat's Whiskers TV. Coming up on this week's show, we'll be looking back at the games at the weekend. Our guest is Radio Nottingham's Owen Bradley, and we'll be chatting about Panthers' season so far, and he'll be facing the students' questions. Plus, we'll also look at Panthers' packed Christmas schedule. But first, it's Paul Baum with the festive news. I'm Paul Baum, and this is the Christmas news. The first meeting of the Owen Bradley Appreciation Society is poorly attended. What? Revealed, Dem Didiomete's new job. Steelers gets new sponsorship deal for the Big Orange Bus. Thanks, Scooby. And finally, Cats Whiskers TV's presenters promise never to mock other teams' results again. And that was the festive news. As you can see, we've spared absolutely no expense with our Christmas decorations. And we'd like to say a welcome once again to Radio Nottingham's Owen Bradley. Thanks for joining us again, mate. Nice to be back, boys. Great stuff. Um, Hull, Saturday. Um, a good victory considering what had gone on on Wednesday night against Edinburgh Capitals, and I think it was just what the Panthers needed. Yeah, uh, cliche is banana skin, but Hull isn't an easy place to go at the best of times. Nottingham do have a good record there. In some ways, a good game to play before Belfast on the Sunday. Uh, it gives the team the chance to get back into the stride, to kind of right some wrongs, and not have to do it against Belfast, where the pressure would be on immediately. And in a way, do it away from the home fans as well, because the pressure, the bad feeling would probably still have been there from Wednesday. And it means that you can flush that out of the system a little bit before you get to the bigger game of the weekend on Sunday. Of course, we were in Hull on Saturday night. And I think we said on overtime uh, after the Edinburgh game that we find out a lot about the team by how they respond. Uh, and they responded well. Oh yeah, I mean it was a it was a great team performance. You know there were people who stood out. I thought Jason Beckett was absolutely excellent. Uh, David Ling, I'm sure we'll be talking about him a bit more <laughs> in a minute. Uh, was his usual talkative self. And um, but you know and and Kelsey Wilson straight in off the plane. I thought he had a, a, a decent game. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think that was the the epitome. It was a great team performance. There was nobody in Hull had a bad game at all. I thought. But what did the fans think? We got some reactions after the game. Great response after Wednesday's game. Fantastic. It's just such a lift for everyone after this, you know, brilliant game. So really feisty. Another bloodbath. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, looking forward to Belfast game. What do you reckon? I don't know. They've had to work hard tonight, but I just think they've pumped it up and they're ready for it tomorrow. So brilliant. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Well, Scooby, great game tonight, wasn't it, mate? It was an absolute cracker of a game, wasn't it? Crackerjack of a game. Uh, could have gone either way, really. A few, um, let me say, contentious refereeing decisions by a referee who was pretty much out of his depth, to be pretty, pretty honest. Both teams, there was like more elbows there than a, a plumber's merchant, by the look of it, you know what I mean? It was just one of them games. Had it all, really, didn't it? Apart from, apart from a Ryan Ann fight, which I was expecting, but didn't come out. We still got a couple of uh, tussles in that first period, then. Yeah, there was a couple, and Smithy had a good one, didn't he? And uh, what was the other one? Um, Love Darland, uh, Ling. Ling. That was it. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty much uh, pretty decent fights. Got the crowd going, didn't it? Um, I've got to ask you about because I mean, 
all you will be able to see, but <laughs> we can't about your uh, booster board here. Yeah, we got the idea from there was a uh, North American team put one up. Um, it was all over the internet, and like we thought, well, isn't this is a good idea. Um, management approach does what do you think so the Bungster Club paid for it it's just a good advertisement and uh, for, for what we've paid out for it it's been on there uh, it's been twittering all over the world and uh, we've got on page three of all places of the whole Daily Mail which is free advertisement and everything like that and on all the local papers and it was on power play and stuff like that and uh, Brayhead seemed to think it was funny the other week when they came there was all uh, jostling for positions I look of it I, um, I don't know I've Corey might have looked uh, pretty nice on one of these. <laughs> well, probably the one I'm on at the minute. <laughs> of course, you are the announcer here. And, and to finish up, can you tell us any clean stories? Because you do like to wind the opposing players up sometimes, so I've heard. Well, uh, it has been alleged. Um, I've done a few um, few clean ones. It's just the music selection more than anything else. We uh, wind players up with the music selection there. Uh, I've had a run-in with uh, Mr Nielsen uh, a few times. That was quite interesting. And... Uh, Mr Hewitt from uh, Sheffield doesn't like me very much. <laughs> and uh, there's a former player that used to play here, Ryan Jordy. Um, he came here and did something naughty with uh, a member of some... Well, he did something naughty, put it that yeah. way. We'll, we'll not go we'll, into Yeah, it. yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at that. All, all, the, all the music had um, love and uh, sex connotations that night. And uh, when Newcastle was here, he played for, New, he played for Newcastle when he came back. And uh, David Longstaff actually took a penalty just to congratulate me. He said it was the funniest thing he's ever heard in ice hockey in all the 30-odd years of his playing. <laughs> Thanks for your time as always, mate. No worries, mate. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Some great stories there from uh, Paul Carruthers, also known as Scooby, the Hall announcer. But I think we'll swiftly move on <laughs> to Sunday's game against Belfast. What a performance. Yeah, great performance. Uh, I was talking to Chris Ellis after the first period uh, when Panthers were a goal down. And we were saying, you know, they're a goal down, but they've, they've still played OK. Uh, and that was borne out by the shot totals, 14-7, I think, kind of the first. Mm. And then second period came out and, and did everything that this Panthers team need to do to play well they were hitting they were competing for every puck offensively as well as defensively and the scoring clicked and, and they were clinical and, and that was the big difference you get a snipe from David Ling you get a nice move from uh, from Brandon Benedict the two on ones the extra man uh, moves they really took advantage of and you know special teams were really important on Sunday a uh, shorthanded goal for the Giants couple for Nottingham and, and power play goals as well everything clicked that second period of course two shorthanded goals and Belfast making, I won't say excuses, but they, I suppose they had a valid point that they had two really good defensemen missing, but still had 16 scale, skaters, still had 10 imports. Um, I don't think either of us expected that sort of result. No, not at all. I mean, but, you know, Belfast can say they got two players out. One of them was their own fault. Really, you know, you check somebody in the head, you got a ban for it. You know, don't come and moan to us about that. But, yeah, I mean... It was, a, you know, it was a really good result. And I think what, what turned it for us was that 10, 15 minute period in the second period. We, we just turned it on. And like no other team I've, I've seen in this league, especially not this season, you know, nobody can keep with us. We just seem to just, to, everything clicks, like I was saying, everything clicks. And we just go and, you know, people just can't hang on to us. I'll ask you, I'll ask you both the same question. I'll come to you first, Paul. Do you think, the weekend's results exercises the result against Edinburgh. They help. I think, I mean, yes, to an extent they do, but you've always got to have that at the back of the mind. And it should be at the back of the mind, you know, that complete, you, know, you can't have complacency. You know, we get as many points from beating Belfast, as massive a game as it was, as we do, did for beating Hull, as we would have done for beating Edinburgh. You know, Edinburgh get, you know, they beat us, they get, only get two points. You win by 10, you win by two, you still get two points. Every game matters. Owen? Paul's pretty much bang on with what he says. The only slight difference is that, that you do have the point swing with the Giants. It's two points that they haven't got against Nottingham. Uh, it helps. It doesn't make up for the fact. In some ways, losing the odd game reminds you when it's important. Uh, it certainly doesn't go the whole way, but it, it was a really good performance. And... The important thing more than anything was that Nottingham didn't lose ground on Belfast and on Sheffield when they lost to Edinburgh. They went into that game and probably part of the problem was 
that they knew that two points would take them that much further away in the standings. They didn't get them, but they didn't lose any ground. And then they've made up for that by beating Belfast and making sure that they move further clear of Belfast. So it doesn't make up for it. It helps. And in the great scheme of things, you don't want to lose ground on your rivals. And they didn't do that. And I think uh, we, we look at it now, we, I think that's one defeat in eight games, which is the Edinburgh defeat. And that is championship form. You're doing it again, aren't you? I'm, it, but it is. It is, but let's not go any further than that. We get into trouble when we say too much about things, remember? Yes, all right, fair point. <laughs> Look, it's early days, but what I would say is the last time I was on this programme, Nottingham had just lost to Sheffield and everybody was calling for every player to go. You yeah. know, Bruce Graham should have been sent home. Uh, Pat Gallivan should have been sent home there. Now the second, uh, third and fourth in the scoring charts. I mean, we had a smaller sample size then. Nottingham have definitely shown what more, uh, what kind of side they really are, I think, over the, the past few weeks. Yeah, it's title winning form, but it's about keeping mm. it up. You know, yeah. There's no point avoiding talking about it because fans go, oh, well, if we talk about it, we'll jinx it. It's the same way that saying the S word when you're two nil up with 15 minutes to go in a game doesn't mean your netmind is not going to get a shootout, uh, a shutout rather, and you're allowed to talk about it. But you know, there is a long way to go. Yeah. Panthers won't forget that. The players certainly won't forget that. But it's nice to be on top and Panthers fans should enjoy it. OK, thanks for the moment, guys. Owen, I mean, it's been two and a half months since you was last on the show and I think it's fair to say that Panthers as a team have improved leaps and bounds since then because uh, there was quite a bit of negativity about, as, as you alluded to in, in our last piece. Um, and now it seems to be just all positive. So uh, what do you think the differences are? Well, I think, you know, as we were saying earlier, when we last spoke to you, we were a month into the season. It's not an awful lot of games to look at and judge a player and, and judge a team. And Bruce Graham is a prime example of that. He came in and people looked at the big body and thought, well, this guy's going to go out and, and kill people and he's going to be the physical presence. And we have learnt that he's not that kind of player. He'll use his size and he'll use it effectively, but he isn't the enforcer, the big body that you maybe think is when you look at him. Uh, and he is a guy that things have settled down for off the ice and now we're seeing him really benefit on it. Pat Gallivan has found his stride and everybody's kind of found their place in the team because there were plenty of returnees from last season. There was still a solid brick core. There's still plenty of imports that came back. Matt Francis is an example and everybody needs to find their place. And in some ways the team is still getting there because even from uh, Wednesday to, to Sunday and Saturday, lines are changing and the team developing. Got to give a lot of credit to Anthony Stewart. Uh, maybe he didn't put the points up. That was a bit of a disappointment. I remember seeing Matt Bolesky uh, get the hat-trick for Coventry and you kind of looked at him and thought, maybe that's the impact that we thought we would get with Anthony Stewart and we didn't necessarily get. But he did a lot for the team uh, in terms of bringing them together, in terms of that extra, uh, that extra presence, that extra guidance. Uh, I remember watching a game with Josh Ward where he was talking about some of the things that that Stuart did in training and did on the ice and, uh, and what that gives. But his performance as well, he was always competing for a puck. I can't remember him getting knocked off it. And even that helps. And, you know, Nottingham are a possession team and that's how they play their best. They're not a counter-attacking side. They want to dictate the play. And don't forget as well that they've got people back from injury. Jonathan Weaver missed time. He's come back and been incredible for the past couple of months. So, you know, there's a lot of factors, but you've got to look at it now and say that they're moving in the right direction. I think two things happened, like, very, very shortly after you, you, you was on the last show, is that Anthony Stewart came in. I think we, actually it was that night where, where, night, where, yeah. where it was tweeted that there's an NHL player, and, but we couldn't find out who. Uh, and also Corey Nielsen's injury, which led to him going behind the bench. How much of a factor do you think that's been? I think on reflection, looking at things now, it was a big one. Um, you can't look past what Corey has done uh, as a player. And at most teams in this league, he would still be out there. But I thought it was really telling that when Kelsey Wilson arrived on Friday, my immediate assumption was he will arrive, uh, he maybe will play Saturday or Sunday, but probably not both, especially with Steve Lee out. Corey will put himself in as the extra defenceman. And instead, Jordan Fox drops back, Corey stays behind the bench, and Kelsey Wilson comes in. And I think that says a lot about the way that Corey's developed as a coach, 
Um, you know, people look at Corey Nielsen and say he's cocky, he's arrogant, he thinks about himself, he wants the personal glory. You know, look at that, and that is evidence that that's simply not true. He's, he's recognised that the best thing to do is to drop one of his best forwards onto defence because he can still do a good job there. Corey can see the ice and see the game and bring in Kelsey Wilson. And I think that says a lot about, about Corey and how he's developing as a coach. And you look around other coaches in the league, you know, nobody's leaving Nottingham because they're unhappy about the way they've been treated or, or anything else. His, his man management as well of this team has so far been very good. Um, we'll talk about the Christmas schedule with Paul in a short while, but um, looking ahead, further ahead to January, is that's probably the big schedule. You know, we, we've got all conference games, all conference league games in that month. Will that be the make or break for the season? Absolutely, especially with Nottingham's history, as it were, um, which we'll talk about uh, the Christmas slides, the January slides, and. When they lost to Edinburgh, you, you, you kind of think, well, maybe we're going to see it again. But there are players that have been here before and will know uh, and will hopefully know how to avoid it. And the players that are new, you like to Bruce Graham, family man, you would hope that, that they will have mature heads to get us through. And in someone like David Ling, who's been around the block, he will know how to carry a team through. So the signs are good, but you just never know with, with Nottingham. There is a lot of previous there. Well, thanks for that for the moment, but you've got another job to do because you're now facing the students' quickfire questions. Can't wait. <laughs> Hold on to your hat. It's time for the students' quickfire questions. <laughs> That's if he can get out of bed, of course. Let's find out about this week's contestant. This week's contestant is Owen Bradley. He works for the BBC, is slightly taller than Jono, and is a big fan of Christmas jumpers. Owen Bradley, you're facing the students' quickfire questions this week. You get 30 seconds on the clock, please. Time starts now. Rudolph or Blitzen? Rudolph. Craig Holland, Boris Johnson's love child or not? Not. Jono, dwarf or elf? Elf. Belfast, cack or crack? Crack. Yes or no, Hull is the most versatile arena? Yes. Donna or sheesh? Donna. Drew fatter or thinner? Fatter. Crosby or Ovechkin? Crosby. You're wrong. Lock out or lock in? Lock in. Thank you, Owen, for facing the students' quick five questions this week. Join us next time for more student quick fire questions. You know you want to. How do you find that? Harrowing. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody says. <laughs> Anyway, moving on, um, we want to talk about a player who's been a big part of this uh, Panthers team this season, um, and probably not not one of the favourites of uh, fans of other teams, and that is uh, Mr. David Ling. Um, Paul, I'll come to you first. Hull, Saturday, fight. <laughs> he was anyway, he, he was superb all game, but I mean, yeah, that fight. It's you know he stood up for his uh, his teammate when. Love Dahl was cross-checking. I think it was Mark Levers when he was like, when he, you know, when he's kneeling on the ice. Second time in two games that all players done that to one of ours. And um, but you know he, he stood up for his own player and he just went in there. I mean the fight was it fairly even until you and you could. I, I was watching. Him, I thought, what's he doing? He was sort of working. He was trying to push Love Dahl away from him, mm. and then he just swung that uppercut. Love Dahl's legs went game over. Yeah. Oh, and how much impact do you think he's had on the team? Well, you can see the guy's experience, which is what Paul's talking about in the fight. He's been around the block and not in a bad way. You know, he's got the experience, he's got the skills to match it as well. You look at his goal against Belfast, other goals he scored as well. Well, he'll just wheel around the top of the circle and put one top corner. And it's that kind of spark that sometimes Nottingham have missed. It's also the agitation that often in previous years Nottingham have missed it. And he does it in such a clever way as well. We would hate this guy. Yeah. If he no, played for anybody else, you would hate this guy. But what he does is effective and, and he brings the guys together and, and he's often a focal point of other teams' frustrations, which allows other teams to play. I mean, a guy like him, you can see why everybody wanted him in the summer. Mm. Okay, well, we're going to move ahead and look at the Christmas schedule for the Panthers. Um, starting this weekend, a home game against Fife and then a very, very big game at the Skydome against Coventry on Sunday. Um, 
again, it's it's essential that we keep winning. Yeah, you ha you have to look at it now and say it needs to be a four point weekend. The home game, you perhaps look at and say this is a gimme. Hopefully, they won't fall into. Well, that we, trap. well we thought about that with Edinburgh. So. Yeah, but uh, but I do think Fife will Fife won't necessarily play the same type of game as Edinburgh no. play and and you know Edinburgh play a certain type of game because of the situation. I don't think any other team really plays in quite the same way. Um, but you look at that game and you say that should be a Panthers win. And then on the Sunday they've got to get this trick right of, of winning in Coventry and if they can start to do that and start to do that now that could be very important end of the season. There's no reason they can't do it. They've got the players to play on that smaller ice and, and make an impact as well and, and hopefully they'll have learnt the lessons from previous games there. Mm. Then moving on, of course, it's the big double header against Sheffield, Boxing Day on the 27th. Yeah. Um, and again, Sheffield at the moment are looking pretty vulnerable. Um, not only the coach, but also their, their team bus as well. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, how important is it that we uh, face them and take advantage? It's, you know, they're, they're two massively important games. And I'm just sort of contradicting what I was saying earlier, but yeah, you know, that these are games we've not traditionally done well in. I mean, I agree with Roy Wood out Wizard. I wish it was Christmas every day. Then you don't have Boxing Day and end up <laughs> losing to them, do you? But yeah, I mean, big, big games. And, you know, you, mean, you always want to beat Sheffield. We've talked about that before. But those are the games that everybody wants to win. And again, these are going to be important games for Sheffield as well because. They, they've been struggling of late, but they're still in contention. They're still in touch. So they're wanting to go out, go out there and win those games. Yeah, they're certainly not out of it. I think, I think the difference is providing that, that teams win the games you expect between now and, and Boxing Day. Panthers are going to go into that game with, what, a four, six-point lead, maybe a bit more. And that's a different dynamic to previous seasons. Previous seasons, Nottingham have looked at that double header and gone, we need to win at home and then we need to win in Sheffield. Splitting the series won't be good enough. And suddenly Nottingham can look at it and go, we win our home game and we split the series, that's fine because Sheffield will still be six points behind. And whatever Sheffield do, they've, they're the ones that have got to catch us. And that's a dynamic we've not really seen before. Um, the Christmas schedule ends on the following sat Saturday. We've got Dundee at home. And again, like, like, like Fife, like Edinburgh, you, you would hope that that would be two points. But again, it, it, you cannot take it for granted, especially with Dundee's Sammy Ryland being in the form he is in. We know all about Sammy Ryland. Uh, great guy, great player, doing really well up there and, and kind of relishing the extra ice time. And Nottingham will have to be careful of him. But again, you, you have to look at every out-of-conference game and you have to target that and say, these are gimmies. And if we have any kind of title ambitions at all, Nottingham have to say to themselves, we must win these games. It's as simple as that, especially at home against the likes of Fife, Dundee, etc. So Nottingham have to tick over, take those victories and then go into Coventry, go into Sheffield. And that's where you need to say, we get a point here, we get two points here. They're the ones that will matter under the season. Paul? Yeah, I agree entirely. You know, when we, we you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, the, the Christmas slump, but as well as that, you know, we, we didn't do what we normally do at the start of the season, go racing ahead. So maybe it is time for a change. Great. Well, thanks, Zoe. Thanks for joining us once again. Thanks for your time, as always. <laughs> The, that's it for this show, the Christmas special. There won't be a, a show next week, obviously, because it's Christmas. So we'll see you again in the new year. And we hope everyone has a very happy and prosperous Christmas and new year. The Sheffield game was cancelled because the coach broke down. Yeah, the team bus developed a malfunction as well. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs>